Welcome to the basics of Register 360, part one. In this installment, we're going to cover creating a project, as well as some settings and project storage locations. When you first open up Register 360, this is what you're going to see. This box that's in the middle of the screen is called your Project Explorer. Currently, I'm only looking at my recently used projects. If I click on All Projects, you can see it'll bring up everything that I have in the system. If I want to just click into the search box and type a name of a project, I can simply do that, hit search, and it will find the project. You'll notice that with all of these projects, they all have arrows where you can pull down. These are to select different versions. So in this case, water only has one version. But if I come down here to garage, garage has three versions, and currently it would open version three as that is the bold version. If I wanted to change it, just simply select, and then I can open in order to create a new project, I simply click on Create New Project, type in the name of the project that I wish to have, and select OK. Once I've done that, you'll see that there's very distinct areas of the software. First and foremost, right up here at the top, is your title toolbar. Then, directly beneath that, in this whole area right here, this area is called your Explorer panel. And once we import data, it's where all of that data would fall. The middle area is your graphical view area, and then finally the area off to your right is your properties panel. You can see that we have different options when it comes to imports. You can just drag and drop files. I can browse for files. I can import files directly from a BLK or BLK to go, also directly from Field 360. Now, let's take a look at some settings. If I hit the settings box up in the toolbar, the first tab here is my general tab, which is going to cover your units as well as a couple other items. Um, Pano imagery here, you can see that you can export anything from 1024 up to 5K. My personal preference is to usually have that set at 2048 by 2048. Again, it'll import a little bit faster by having it set to that. Import performance, I usually always have set to fast. Anybody with a, a, a relatively new computer can have that. However, if you were wanting to do something else while it was importing that may take some computer power, you may want to go down to balance. Under export here, you'll see that we have a box check called export clean points for E57, PTG, and PTX formats. And this is important. Um, if you don't have this box checked, and I spend a lot of time cleaning the point cloud and then export it out in E57, it's going to export out the original unclean point cloud. So make sure that you have that area checked. Underneath links, you have target options. So these are just your max target errors. And then the appearance of your links that you're going to have, whether they're green, yellow, or red, uh, depends on these settings here. And then your licenses, obviously it's going to pull up that, but this is where you can change your, your server or you check your license. Uh, cloud to cloud settings just goes into your max iterations and search radius. And filtering is our mixed pixel filtering. So that's about it for settings. Let's open up our projects and storage real quick. And you'll see underneath here in the projects tab, um, I can either export out an archive file. So if I select this project here and pull this down and export, I can export out an archive file or a fast archive file. If I select import here, you can see that it pulls up a box and it's looking in the default folder that I told it to search for and it found an archive project. So if I wanted to import that here, I could just select it and hit OK. I'm not going to. Um, you also see that I have one project here that's not active, so it doesn't show up in that original Project Explorer. If I wanted to activate it, I just select it and hit Activate. Um, I can also delete projects out of here by simply selecting and hitting Delete. I can rename them. Uh, I can deactivate them by simply just selecting Deactivate, or I could even relocate them to different storage locations. Underneath the storage folder, you can see I've only got one, but you can have multiple storage locations. The importance here is just to make sure that when you are going to start doing things that you have the correct storage folder name for those. Um, I can select a project and if I have multiple places, I could select different storages. Um, I can add a storage folder. I can remove a storage folder by clicking on the browse here or hitting remove. If I wanted to reconnect to a project that maybe somebody else had on their computer that now I'm moving to my computer, I can simply hit the reconnect button here and then I would just go to wherever that folder is that that file resides in and hit select folder. In this case, nothing's going to be found because I don't have anything. And then this is just my uh, archive folder, my temp folder. 
And again, you can change these by simply hitting on the browse button. You don't have to take the default.